you've been missed. I hope you had a good week and um, that all is calm as can be. So today we're going to be reading Your Skin and Mine by Paul Showers and illustrated by Kathleen Quichera. Okay. And before we start, we'll pray. So Father God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to come together once again and to worship you and, and love you and praise you. We want to thank you for keeping the children and one day at a time with you, Father God, and that you bless them and that you continue to anoint them father god and if they've been going through certain things that you comfort them father god and their family and their loved ones and that you keep them and you guide them and and never forsake them father god so we thank you for this time and we worship you and we love you in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen so this is talking about your skin and mine so it's a non-fiction book and i think it's related to what science yes it's a good science so mary's skin is light brown so is Henry's. Mark's skin is dark brown and my skin is white with freckles. Mary, Henry, and Mark are in my class at school. The other day, our teacher passed out some magnifying glasses. Mark I'm sorry, Mary and Mark and Henry and I took turns looking at our skin under a magnifying glass. You can do the same thing if you have a magnifying glass at home. And hair is part of your skin. With a magnifying glass, you can look at the hair that grows out of your skin. Short hairs grow on your arms and legs. Long hair grows on your head. Each hair grows out of a little hole called a follicle. So here's the hair. This is the skin. And this is the follicle. A follicle is a kind of tiny pocket the hair grows up from the bottom of the follicle. It sticks out of the follicle the way a flower sticks out of a vase. A follicle has oil in it. The oil keeps the hair soft and shiny. It oozes out of the follicle and helps keep the skin from getting too dry. If you look at your fingertips under the magnifying glass, you can see loops and lines. These are ridges in your skin. You can make prints of the ridges on your fingertips. You can do that by, you rub your fingers in some finger paint, press the tips down on a piece of white paper and lift your hand up carefully. Your fingerprints show loops and lines. You can see them better under a magnifying glass. And here they are. This one of Mary's fingerprints under the magnifying glass. This is Mark's fingerprints. And this is Henry's. So you see how different they are? 
and everybody's fingerprints are different. Fingernails and toenails are part of your skin. They protect the tips of your fingers and toes. They are like your hair because they keep growing all the time. When you cut your hair, you don't feel anything. When you cut your nails, you don't feel anything either. The rest of your skin has feeling. You can test this with a little game. And it goes like this. If, with, if we were to do it or if you do it at home, what we could do is one of us is blindfolded. Then the rest of us try to touch the other person gently so that he can't feel it. Then we touch him gently on his cheek, his wrist, his leg. We touch him with a tooth, with a paintbrush, I'm sorry, or a toothbrush too, and a feather. It is hard to fool him. He can feel even a very light touch on his skin or your skin. Your skin helps you to keep cool. On a hot day, you become sweaty. Sweat is water that comes out from inside your body. Your skin lets it out through tiny holes called pores. As the sweat dries, your skin becomes cooler. Most of the pores in your skin are smaller than the hair follicles. So you cannot see the pores even with a magnifying glass, but you can see the drops of sweat that come out of them. Okay, so you see them sweating there? Your skin has two layers. The inside layer is called the dermis. There is blood in the dermis. The outside layer is called the epidermis. There is no blood in the epidermis. The epidermis keeps rubbing off a little bit at a time. When you rub yourself hard with a towel, you often rub off a bit of your epidermis. It comes off in little pieces all rolled up. When these little pieces of epidermis flake off, there is always more epidermis underneath. See the little layers? Sometimes you rub off more epidermis than you want to. The other day we were climbing trees. I slid down too fast and skinned my leg. I, scri I scraped off a piece of epidermis. Part of it was wrinkled up at one side of the scraped place. That's happened. It's been a long time. I could see the dermis layer of my skin. It was pink. It stung and smarted. That means it hurts. But it didn't bleed. A clear, sticky fluid oozed out of the dermis until it covered all of the scraped part. That made the dermis stop smarting, and we went on playing. In a half hour, the sticky fluid had dried and made a crust, which is called a scab. My father says a scab is like a band-aid. It keeps germs out until new epidermis can grow. Then the scab falls off. So that's why it's good for us not to peel it. So this way you don't have a scar there. You let it happen naturally, but with nature. Yesterday, Mary cut her finger when she opened a can of pet food for her cat. The cut went through the epidermis and into the dermis. And that's when the blood came out of the cut.
Her mother washed Mary's hands with soap and water. Then she put a bandage over it. That was to help stop the bleeding and to keep germs out. Your body is all wrapped up in skin. It covers your body from top of your head to the soles of your feet. Your feet helps to keep germs and dirt out of your body. That's why it's not good to be walking around barefooted. Skin also protects the body from the sun. It does this by making grains of colored called melanin. Melanin grains are brown. They are very tiny. They are so tiny, you can't even see one of them under a magnifying glass. There are millions of melanin grains in the skin. They are like a screen. They protect the body from the burning rays of sunlight. Everybody's skin makes melanin. Some skin makes a lot of melanin. Other skin does not make very much. Mark's skin makes a lot of melanin. Henry's skin and Mary's skin do not make as much as Mark's. And that's a good idea for you to find out why. I know why, but I'm not going to tell you so that you could look it up. When the sun is very bright, the skin makes more melanin to screen out the burning light. That is why your skin gets darker when you play outside in the sun. My skin makes little melanin. Some of it is gathered in spots. These are my freckles. In summer, my skin does not make enough melanin to screen out the sun's burning rays. I have to rub a sunscreen lotion on my skin. If I don't, I can get a painful sunburn. And that goes even for everybody, even if they're not as light or as sensitive with their uh, skin. Mary, Henry, and Mark will also get sunburns if they don't wear a sunscreen. Their skin won't burn as fast as mine, but the sun can burn even very dark skin. And here we go with the pages getting stuck again. Thank you for understanding. Skin is easy to keep clean. It is easier to clean than cloth or almost anything. Yesterday, my sister and I helped mother clean up the attic. Mother made us wear our bathing suits. The attic was full of dust and cobwebs. We got sweaty and very dirty. And here, thank you for being patient with the pages. When we finished, we soaked ourselves and turned the hose on each other. That sounds like fun. In two minutes, we were clean again. Mother said it was easier than washing our dirty clothes. One, two, three, right? Mother made us cold lemonade. We sat on the steps. The breeze blew on our wet skin. We were cool inside and out. So maybe you could look and find out how is it that we could make our skin or our insides to cool inside and outside. I thought this was a fun book in addition to a learning book. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. So till next time, God bless you. I love you. Miss you, and I'll be praying for you. Be safe. Bye-bye.